This is the fifth video in this series working with the Makehuman model in Blender. And in the last video we left off making a good start on the upper body. So let's continue with that. Selecting the tip of the lower arm left bone, I'm going to extrude a wrist left bone. So I'll press the E key, extrude that down to the area of the ring finger. And look at that from the front view. Select the tip of that bone and pull it into the area of the hand and center that in the area of the fingers and return to a side view and extrude from that bone the ring finger bone. Again look at that from a front view and pull, pull it into the area of the fingers. And I find with the fingers that rotating around a bit and having a good look in the three-dimensional space is for the best to ensure that it's located inside of the finger. I'll then select that bone and subdivide it. W, subdivide multi, number of cuts, two. This will give us three bones for the ring finger. Ring one, ring two, ring three, and all with a left hand assignment. I'll select those three bones, ring one, two, and three, shift, duplicate them, and locate those in the middle finger. So now we have middle finger one, two, and three. Scale those up a touch because the middle finger is somewhat larger than the ring finger and rotate that around to get a look at how well that sits into the finger and perhaps move it around until it sits better. At this point I'm going to go into pose mode in pose mode, I'm going to add a constraint in between these two bones. So I'll select the bone which I want the constraint copied from and the one that I wish constrained. And I'll press Control alt c and add a copy rotation constraint to this bone. Change the C-space to local and local. Add that constraint from the ring to the middle finger on all of these bones. Control Alt C, copy rotation, local space, and local space. And for the fingertip as well, Control Alt C, copy rotation, local space, and local space. Then return to edit mode and select the three bones in the middle finger. Press the three key to make sure I'm in the side view. Shift duplicate that. And I'll pull that duplicate up into the area of the index finger. The index finger is considerably smaller than the middle finger, so I'll scale that down a little bit. And again, look at it in a three dimensional view and try to center that bone onto the finger so that it's inside of the mesh. Return to a side view and locate that so that the pivot is sitting in the area of the knuckle. So I'll give that a little pull over. Then snap my cursor to that root pivot. Select all the three bones Press the period key so that I'm in 3D cursor pivot and rotate the three bones around the 3D cursor and 5 degrees should do. Then I'll select the bones in the middle finger again, shift duplicate those and move them into the area of the pinky. I'll center it on the pinky and then scale it down. 
Before I scale it, though, I'll need to press the comma key to return my pivot to the median point. So the scaling occurs in the middle of that assembly. I'll scale that bone down and try to locate it while in the finger. And again rotate around to get a view that the bones are sitting inside of the finger. And those look good. Now I'll locate my cursor to add a thumb. I'll start my thumb up higher in the hand. Look at it from a front view and again place the cursor into the middle of the thumb area. When I'm satisfied with my cursor's location, I'll add a bone, grab that bone, and locate it into the tip of the thumb. Look at it from a front view, zoom in, and pull that into the actual thumb. And again return to a side view. Use the W key, subdivide multi-number of cuts to pull each of these pivots into the areas of their joints and knuckles. While doing so, I'll try to add a degree of curl to the thumb to help facilitate the IK. The thumb will be curled from a side view whereas the fingers will be curled from a front view. So I'll select the pivot for each of the fingers as well as the tip of each of the fingers. And from a front view, push those in towards the body. Return to a side view. Select the middle bone on each of those fingers. Return to a front view and pull those out from the body a bit. And that will give a curl in the front view for all of the fingers. With that portion of the hand completed, I'm going to cut out of my video and check on how much time I have left and be back in just a moment. Well, I've only got a couple minutes left, so I'll give uh, another quick run over the names of these bones. We'll have wrist L, pinky L1, or pinky 1 L, pinky 2 3, index or ring 1 2 and 3, middle 1 2 and 3, index 1 2 and 3, all with the left hand assignment of L, and then thumb 1 2 and 3, and again with the L assignment. In the next video, we'll come back and add some IK to the middle finger. Looking at the bones in pose mode, you'll see that three of the fingers have the copy rotation constraint now. That's because we copied the middle finger after adding that constraint. And some people may not want that constraint. For those people, I would suggest not duplicating the fingers until after the IK assembly has been added to the ring finger. But I'm going to control the hand with two fingers, the ring finger and the thumb. So in the next video, we'll add IK to that and look at what settings we have, which could possibly be wrong for our IK setup so far. So that'll be in the next video, and until then, happy modeling.